Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. In this video, I'd like to take a closer look at Swift sets and see how they compare to arrays, when you should and when you shouldn't use them, and what the benefits are. If you've mostly used arrays in Swift, you might be missing out on a powerful tool, and that's sets. In this video, we'll explore what makes sets unique and when you should be using them in your code. There is a starter playground for this video, and you can download it from the link in the description. If you work along with me, you're more likely to retain what you learn, and in the end, you'll have a completed playground that you can refer back to in the future. But there also is a completed playground branch that has that completed project code. Just make sure you download the zipped archive for the starter project if you're working along with me. Well, a set is an unordered collection of unique values, and that means that no duplicates are allowed, fast lookups and insertions occur, but there's no guaranteed order of elements. These are the differences between sets and their close relation, arrays. Let's start by looking at how you can create a set. And sets are created much like arrays with square brackets, but to distinguish between the two, you must specify that you are creating a set. Now sets have type inference, so by creating a set like this, it knows that it's a set of integers. And when I print out this set, however, Notice that the duplicate 1 and 2 are removed, and all I'm left with is 1, 2, and 3, only three elements. And if I run the playground again, notice as well that the order is different. And those are the two main differences between sets and arrays. Duplicates are stripped, and there's no guaranteed order of elements. So the concept of referencing an element by index doesn't really make any sense for a set. If I want to create an empty set, we do need to specify the type, and we can do that in two ways. We can specify the set type within angle brackets like this, and then we can simply specify an empty set with square brackets. Or we can specify the set type during the initialization phase like this. The fact that set elements must be unique provides us with a quick way of removing duplicates from an array. So consider this array here that has duplicates that we can see when we print it out. To convert an array to a set, we just have to initialize it as a set. You can then remove duplicates from any array and keep the object as an array by first converting it to a set and then back to an array again. Of course, the order may be lost because of that initial set conversion. And that's something to be aware of. Well, since you can generate sets from arrays, we can also generate a set from a range, like here for a set of integers from one to 10. Again, order is not guaranteed. And there's also a sequence initializer for a set. So if, for example, you want to create a set of even integers from 0 through 10, we can specify the sequence where the first integer is 0. Then we can use the next closure, where if the result $0 is less than 10, we add 2. Otherwise, we specify nil to end the iteration. Again, the order is not guaranteed, but you can add a sort to a set to guarantee that order after the fact. I hope you're enjoying this video, and if you are, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. It would also really help if you could subscribe to my channel and enable notifications so that you're alerted when I drop a new one here on YouTube. I put out weekly videos and I seldom miss a week. So if you really want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. A link is in the description. So let's explore the core set of operations. Well, there are three core operations. Here I have a set of integers constructed from the range 1 through 10. And each time I print, the order is going to be different. If we want to add an element to a set, we use the insert method and supply an element of the same type, so like 11. And that element gets added, but the placement is not necessarily at the end. 
If you try to add an element that already exists, it just gets ignored and it doesn't generate an error, like if we try to add another four. To delete an element, you use the remove method. And since items are unique, it will find if it exists that element and remove it from the array. It's really fast, and this is a real benefit of sets over arrays. Now, if you try to remove an element that does not exist, no error is reported. If you wish to clear out an entire set, you use the remove all method. In this next section, I have a set that's comprised of a set of integers that are all odd numbers. Now, if I print it out, you see that the order is random. But there is a count method like we have for arrays that will return the number of elements. So that might be one way to determine if when you add or remove an element from a set, whether or not it existed prior to that insert or removal attempt. And like arrays, there is an isEmpty method to determine if a set is empty or not. You can check to see if an element exists within a set, though, using the contains method. And this will give you either true or false. If you want to determine the first element of a set, you can use the first method. But this will return an optional value, as there is no guarantee that a set is not empty. Now, each time I use the print command, I'm always going to get the first element of that set. But remember, we constructed that set when we initialized it, where 1 was the first element. So the order was not maintained during initialization. And you get the random element as the first one. But it will remain the same after initialization. If you want to get a truly random element every time, you can use the random element method. Let's explore some set algebra. Consider these two sets, and I'm going to print them to the console so that we can see what we're dealing with. There is a union method that we can use that will join both sets together. So A union B will join both A and B and remove all duplicates because the result itself is a set that does not allow duplicates. Along with union, we have intersection, and that finds and returns a set of common elements. So in our case, A intersection B will find the common element, which is 3. The subtracting method will subtract all common elements from one array from another one. So, for example, A subtracting B will remove the common element 3 from the first set and leave us with the set containing 1 and 2. Going the other way around, however, though, B subtracting A starts with B and then removes 3 to leave us with 4 and 5. And then the final method is symmetric differences. A symmetric difference will remove the common elements from both sets and then perform a union of the remaining elements. So since the common element was 3, it gets removed and we're left both with 1 and 2 from A and 4 and 5 from B. So you can see, in this case, unlike subtracting method, the symmetric difference is the same no matter which order you use. If we compare both subtracting and symmetric difference results, we can verify that. Now here's the last set of operations that I want to cover, and that's the comparison operators. But in this case, both elements of A are also in B. So if we ask if A is a subset of set B, and then again reverse it if B is a subset of A, the result shows us that A is indeed a subset of B, 
but not the reverse. If I create another set C that is identical to A, we can check to see if set A is a subset of itself. Indeed, it is. All sets are subsets of their own self. Well, there's another option, which is strict subset. So I'm just going to copy that previous example and paste it in here to the second code block. But I'm going to change subset to strict subset. And when I run this, I see that the last case is not true now. It's false. Well, the opposite of subset is superset. So I'm just going to copy that subset code, and I'm going to change everything to superset. And this gives us the opposite result to subset. Since A does not contain all of the elements of B, it's not a superset. But B does contain all of the elements of A, so it is a superset. And similarly, any set is also a superset of itself, as we can see here. And we have a similar result for strict superset. So again, I'm just going to copy that previous code again and change all of this superset to strict superset. The results are the same again, except for the last case. A set cannot be a strict superset of itself. And then the final operation is a comparison operation called disjoint. And an array is disjoint from another if there are no common elements. So in our case, since both A and B contain the elements 1 and 2, they are not disjoint. Before I move on to sharing some practical examples, let's review a comparison between sets and arrays. Arrays can have duplicates, they are ordered, and you can access an array element by index because of the order. This is not the case for sets. But the benefits of sets are that they have fast access because there is no indexing, and uniqueness is enforced, and there is a built-in set of algebraic operations. You use sets for fast lookup and uniqueness enforcement, for operations like filtering and checking overlaps, like intersections, and for permission sections like tag filters, etc. You wouldn't use a set, however, if order matters, or if duplicates are allowed, or if you need index-based access. Let's finish this off now with a few practical examples. Perhaps the most common use is removing duplicates from an array. As we've already seen, and it's worth mentioning again, converting an array to a set removes duplicates. And if we check the count before and after, we can verify that this is the case, that duplicate Alice was removed. Now let's consider this struct for a post type where there is a title and the post has a set of tags, no duplicate tags. Now if I have an array of posts like this, I like to find all of my posts from that array where the tags contain both the UI tag and the tips tag. So I can create this as a set that I can call filter. Now, on the array itself, I can create a new array of UI tips posts, and I can find them by filtering the actual posts array to get a post iterator, and then use that filter set to check to see whether or not it is a subset of that post's tags. And then I can use a for in loop for each of the posts through the UI tips post to print the post title. And I see that there are two matching that criteria. Another useful example is to check for permissions. So here is an enum of permissions, and there are three cases. Now, I may have a user who has this particular set of permissions, read and write. Now, to get access to content, I have a required set of permissions, 
and that is simply that the user must have read permission. So to check to see if my user has the correct set, we can check to see if the required set is a subset of the user's permissions. And if so, we can grant access. Otherwise, the access will be denied. Now, if you're running a lottery or a raffle, people can enter their names and you maybe want to pick out one or two winners. Sometimes, however, people enter more than once and that's not allowed, like our friend Alice here. So we can convert this array of names into a set and that's going to remove the duplicates. And then we can use an iflet to unwrap an optional random element and print it out. And then we can remove the winner from the set so that you can pick another one if you like. And here's one more example. Let's say you have a scheduling program where you capture all busy appointment slots in a set like this. And then someone comes along and is requesting an appointment during one of these time slots, which is also submitted as a set. So we need to determine if there are any conflicts by using the intersection operation. And we'll find that the conflict is at 11 a.m. So we can offer the availability slots using the subtracting method. And that will give us 1 p.m. and 10 a.m. It's a very fast operation. Swift sets are powerful. They're underused tools that can simplify your logic and improve performance when used appropriately. Whenever uniqueness matters, consider using a set instead of falling back on an array. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. You can subscribe to my channel to get notifications of new videos. And remember that you can also download my YouTube channel listing app for free and quick access to all of my 350 plus YouTube videos. A link's in the description. And also remember I have a full Swift, Swift UI course available on my Teachable site where you learn how to build a fun, multi-targeted app.